the words of the master are ultimate nanak says gurmukh nadam the gurmukh vedam gurmukh rahasamai the word of the master is the ultimate existential sound the words of the master is the scripture guru ishar guru gorak varma guru parvati mai master is the embodiment of divine within the limitations of the body and mind one who knows this ignorance cannot remain ego cannot remain and to know this there is only one secret gura ek dei bujhai gura means the secret the principle the commandment is one and try to understand this sabna jiya ka ek data so mai visar mein jaayi he is the master of the entire creation this i may never ever forget we think that prayer is full of words it is like a long distant call to someone who is sitting up there in the sky even the elderly people they look towards the sky this is immaturity i have heard in 1860s it was british rule in india a set of missionaries came and they were targeting the tribal people because they are tribal and illiterate and it is easy to convince those people they have heard that there is a man a yogi and he has hundreds of followers they thought there must be a church so we must visit that place they went and to their utter surprise they saw a man in loin cloth sitting under a tree surrounded by many people there was no church there was no hall nothing of what they have known to be a place of worship a place of god they thought this man must have some powers that's why he is attracting so many people so they try to seek an appointment with him when they got the appointment they ask him what is your prayer what is your prayer so he said come on i'll show you prayer you will show me prayer they muttered prayer we say but you are showing me prayer then he took some vegetables he started cutting it he said this is prayer prayer is the quality of the being that you bring to any activity prayer is another name for creativity creativity is the quality of the creator you can cut the vegetables in a most violent way or in a loving way and when you are doing any act lovingly with an understanding with an awareness that everything is an embodiment of the divine sentient and insentient and this was reflected in one of the ancient legends there was a demon king called harnakashyap he had his son prahlad he was real devotee of narayan the another name for vishnu so the demon king wanted everybody to worship him as the supreme authority but prahlad his son refused he tried to destroy prahlad in many ways he threw him up from the mountain he survived he submerged into the water he survived this and that then he asked his sister that was the fire to sit down with him in the fire because she had the boon that everything will burn but she will not and it happened 
the fire burned, the demoness burned, but Prahlad survived. So the father tied him up and he said, where is your God? He said, the God is in this post, in this pillar, everywhere he is, omnipresence. Omnipresence does not mean that you have an image of God in your mind and you expect him to be in that form. Everything manifests its in its own way. Again and again I give the example of electric current and its manifestation. Electric current has myriads of ways to manifest itself. Each manifestation is different. Even when you are recording, it is the effect of the electric current along with other things. It is like an alchemical reaction. There are certain catalysts, the certain elements, the internet facility that also works on electricity, your laptop works on electricity. These are the different manifestations. I am speaking, my voice is converted from analog to digital and it reaches your system. And once again, digital is converted into analog for you to hear. These are all the manifestations of electric current. Electric current is made by man. You can imagine what kind of manifestations God may have. And he said, in this pillar, God, your God is, and he took the sword and cut the pillar. As he cut the pillar, one of the form of Vishnu appeared and killed the Hiranakashap, the demon. Nanak says the word of the master is existential sound. This is the only scripture. God is embedded in the words of the master. Master is Shiva, the destroyer that destroys, destroys all ignorance and negativities from your consciousness. He is the creator. He gives you a new birth. He initiates the inward journey. He is the sustainer when you are on the path. Constant reminder, assurance, and all that I know, had it been total, even then it cannot be, he cannot be glorified, Nanak says. All that I know, had it been total, even then he cannot be glorified because he is beyond everything. No word can encompass. However, with one sutra of the master, the riddle can be solved. And what is the riddle? He alone is the master of the entire creation. But we consider Jesus is the master of Christians, Ram and Krishna is the sustainer of Hindus, so on and so forth. And this, he is, he alone is the master of the entire creation. And this I may never forget even for a moment. Try to understand this. Nanak, Nanak gives too much importance to Guru. All the saints have spoken of this. Master is placed even higher than the scriptures. It is said if whatever the master says is not found in the scripture, then you can discard the scripture. Master is the living scripture. This importance is for certain reasons. Why is Master given so much importance? This you have to understand. A scripture in, a, in particular here refers to Veda. And this is the word of the Master. However, the Master are no more alive. Each scripture is the fragrance of a particular Master. And when Master is no more, there to infuse life into the scriptures, it can no longer remain alive. 
and when you use the words of some something of you will reflect as well the originality is lost do an exam experiment pick up a rose flower from a nearby plant give it to one person and allow him to pass it on to the people standing in a circle so the first one passes it on to the second and third and so on and so forth and ultimately it comes back to you and when it comes back to you it will not be the same it will have something of each one of it it will lose its aliveness the fragrance the beauty it can never remain the same even if its beauty is not even the beauty of the flower will not remain the same some of the petals may fall in the process and simply because an incomplete flower is not brought to me you may add a few things to it you may add a few petals from another flower the flower will complete them but certainly it is not original nanak says the word of the master is a scripture certainly however hundreds of years have passed since then many old things have been deleted by the new ones when you are in the company of a living master it is indeed a blessing also when you are reading the book you will give it the your meaning and your meaning cannot go beyond your consciousness you will impose your meaning on the book this is the reason that there are so many commentaries on bhagavad gita someone follows the path of action the other follows the path of knowledge third one follows the path of renunciation so on and so forth these will color the explanation that is given by the person by the time nanak kabir dadu and other masters came these scriptures became a stain and these masters laid importance on the living master and when you are in front of the living master then you cannot distort his words nanak says even those who have seen god with their own inner eyes cannot describe and you are searching for god in the scriptures that about who nothing could be said and you are trying to understand true stories nothing can be said nanak says one who gives the sutra the ultimate principle the commandment methodology or the secret is really a master nana gives this methodology that always remember that he is the master of the entire creation and this i may never ever forget he is the master of the entire creation is he not the master of the africans indians negroes muslims christians hindus but we call by different name my god is allah your god is god somebody else god is krishna so on and so forth let there be no occasion then when i can forget this the moment you understand this secret then your attention moves from the beads to the to the thread that connects all the beads you have a rosary in your hand why is the rosary given to you so that on every bead you remember bead is not important bead is visible but there is something that connects all the beads together and that thread that understanding is important the purpose of rosary is for you to remember that there is a common thread that connects all the beads of this rosary if you have not understood this then you can go on 
using your rosary life long but nothing will happen and the moment you understand that rosary slips out of your hand it is the thread that supports and binds all the beads you have found and if that has happened you have found the secret so god is the invisible thread that connects the entire creation who can enter in this realm kabir says je ghar apna bare je ghar bare apna chale hamare sang one who is ready to set fire to his house can really move what does kabir means by house kabir implies by house the house of falsehood dishonesty anger jealousy and hatred how can jealousy be the house how can hatred be the house house is a place where you dwell don't you dwell in hatred every moment wherever you see hatred is spreads jealousy becomes your way anger is your way of operation dishonesty also these are the various rooms where we live these are our house this is your house that you have created around you house the room is the place that you create around you to live this is the secret one who is ready to set his house on fire can walk with me that is the secret we go to the pilgrimage we go to the holy places nanak says tirath nawa jatis bhava binubhane ki nai kare what will happen by taking visiting the holy places what will happen by going to the ganges and all these places if our ways and means are not in harmony with him nanak has a strange ways and means no one could really understand him this is the case with all those who have discovered inner treasures whenever anyone begins in world journey he becomes useless for the society and the outer world one day nanak left home to go somewhere no one knew where he had been to he was searched all around wherever he could go possibly people thought that he might have gone to any temple or mosque this is what we consider the moment you become religious the first thing you do is start you buy your scripture bible or anything that is your way of your scripture walk with that to your church to your place of worship where else can you go when you are religious he was nowhere to be seen someone said nanak is they have seen nanak going towards the creation ground no one could believe that no one goes to such a place willingly even a dead person may not want to go that is why he is being carried on a hearse or on the shoulders of four persons so that he may not come out of the hearse and run away that is how a person goes in the cremation ground nanak was sitting in meditation under the tree everyone wanted to know what he is doing in such a place away from home and family and from the religious places people go to temple and mosque etc to meditate and pray everyone said things according to their own level of understanding when everyone has finished saying nanak said one who comes here never goes from here and never dies and the place that you call as your home people die there now introspect which place can be called a cremation ground a place where death is inevitable or where people never die the inhabitant of this place that you call cremation 
cremation ground, no one ever dies. And ultimately one has to come here riding the shoulders of the others and this does not appeal to him, to me. This is the reason I have come on my own. This incident is very significant as it indicates a greater truth. Nanak, why it is it reveals a greater truth? We don't agree or accept willingly death. We try to avoid in every possible way. You remember when your intellect is hijacked by the hormones, you are not interested in God, you are interested in other things. But as the hormonal energy begins to deplete, you are becoming more and more interested and in turning towards God because death is approaching, there is fear. So some people, they avoid two colors, white and black. These are the two colors considered as symbolic of mornings. They will not use those two colors. This incident is very significant as it indicates a greater truth. Nanak is in harmony with all that is to happen. I am prepared. If death has to happen, let it be. Death is inevitable. Nanak has no conflict with death and Master teaches you death, dying moment to moment. And when you learn the art of dying to the moment, it is no more. The moment gone by is no more. We are not carrying the garbage. It teaches you not to carry the garbage. But we are garbage bins carrying the past. The incident that happened 10 years ago, we cannot forget that. That continues to linger and guide all your actions and dealings with the persons. You look at the entire society lives in the graveyards of the past. You always wish this should not have happened this way. You go to cremate to, uh, to the funeral of someone, you know that the person has died. Yes, he died, but I am not going to die. Nanak has no wish of his own, even if death be the wish of the beloved, it is accepted by Nanak. Whatsoever comes from my master, whatsoever comes from my beloved is accepted. That night somehow everyone convinced Nanak to return to home. Nanak returned home, but he was not the same. Something has drastically changed in him. It seemed that something has given way and something to something new and sublime. It always happens. Only when someone dies totally, that new is born. This is the process of rebirth. The entire new life, to enter new life, you have to pass through the door of death. And cremation ground is the way. New birth does not imply a new body. It is the birth, rebirth cycle. New birth really implies dawn of new awareness. You are afraid of death. And when fear is, you cannot be connected to God. You can only be connected to God through love. All your prayers, worships and religiousness is the outcome of your fear, not the outcome of your love and understanding for God then your religiousness cannot be celebration. God, your religion, all your worships, etc. are like security arrangements. God seems to be your insurance. All your holy places, pilgrimages are the outcome of your fear as an insurance security. It is so because you are trained to go to such places because of your demands, fear and as protection. Seldom has one gone to express gratitude. Fear can never take you to God. Fear cannot unite. 
Love has the capacity to unite. Love alone, alone is the force that unites. Fear disintegrates. Love brings closeness. Fear breeds jealousy and hatred. As long as fear remains, love cannot spring forth. You can only decorate your hate and jealousy to look like love. How can you love someone when there is fear? In this state, even if you decide to surrender, it will not definitely be surrender instead of truth. People go to holy places, etc., full of desires for salvation or fulfillment of desires. It is believed that by bathing in Ganges, all sins are washed off. Sin, as you call, does not happen by the body. Body is the instrument. Then, how does sin happen? It is through your hands that you engage in many activities that are considered as sin. Body is the instrument. Prompted by your consciousness, your body instrument engages in such acts that you call sin. Prompted by your consciousness, your body engages the body instrument engages in such acts as you call sin. How can river Ganges wash your consciousness? The holy waters cannot reach there. If your body is dirty, it is full of dirt, it can be washed by taking a bath in the river. Waters of Ganges is good to wash the body. Certainly it cannot sanctify the soul. The methodology for this is different. To sanctify the soul, you have to bring another stream of water. From where can this stream spring forth? This can only spring forth from deep within your being, another holy stream. The sutras of Nanak are the search for the eternal, heavenly Ganges that can wash your sins. Tirat nava jaitis bhava abhanbhane ki naitari. If your ways and means, your life, your living appeals to God, O is in harmony with the divine will, you have really discovered the eternal source of the holy river. It has a spring forth. You have reached to the reservoir. It can happen only when you understand that he is the only doer and you are an instrument. With this understanding, you will appeal to him. And when you appeal to him, you have taken a holy bath. As such as you are, you consider yourself the doer. In all that you do, worldly or spiritual, this doer element remains like an undercurrent. You will hear people saying, Things like this that indicates the doer element. As long as this doer element remains, you are not religious. A religious person is one for whom God is the only doer and he is and you are an instrument. It is because of this doer consciousness you are in constant misery. Are you really the doer? Birth, death and life, nothing is in your hand. And yet still you consider that everything you are doing, this is ignorance. The only ignorance. From the very beginning Nanak says he is the only doer, Karta Puruk. And when he is the Karta Puruk, he is nirbhav, fearless, without any prejudice. To consider yourself doer is the only sin if you want to use this word. Otherwise, for me, ignorance will do. Sin does not exist. All that you do with this doer awareness is ignorance, is unconsciousness, is the negation of truth. What kind of... This is what Krishna is asking Arjun. Leave the awareness of doing. Everything happens because of cosmic law or hukum as Nana calls it, the commandment. Do not bring this understanding in between. 
the light of your understanding cannot take you far be an instrument be like a flute flute does not impose anything of its own it has three qualities number one flute is hollow inside it has nothing of its own no resistance no desire absolutely nothing and this is the meaning of being hollow flute is hollow but are you hollow no flute does not say anything on its own it is an instrument it allows the flutist to bring out the eternal music from deep within through the flute and flute allows this lastly whenever flute speaks it says something it is always a melody a song a raga a musical composition and there remains and these remain total harmony between the flutist and the flute the flute of krishna binds the entire cosmos into one thread and that thread is love the melody of flute is such that is why flute is one of the sweetest musical instrument nanak says be like a flute and one who becomes the instrument is dear to him god loves god's divine love flows incessantly each moment only your pot is upside down this is not conditional love is shavri your pot is turned over the only thing that you have to do is turn over the pot facing the mouth upward it will start collecting the rain of bliss or love his love is unconditional this there is no condition as you may think this is the problem with the worldly love love remains an un- unwanted commodity the husband the wife the father the friend everyone has certain preconditions for their love wife says i can love you only if you can you can fill in the gaps so to so on and so forth because of this there is so much of love talk in the world but love is not seen anywhere turn over the pot of your being allow the pot to fill with this energy this is the methodology this is transformation drop by drop pot will fill one day and then it will start overflowing it can never contain love within when cloud is full of rain water clouds shower when flower is full of fragrance it has blossomed it cannot contain its beauty and fragrance the whole atmosphere air gets filled with fragrance so too as soon as your pot is full it will start overflowing there is no end to his blessings or bounties once you know the art of turning the pot upside nothing else is to be done the rest happens on its own and a master is one whose pot is not only full instead it has now started overflowing in all directions without any conditions or prejudices tirat navajat is bhava brahmane ki nayakri the moment you are in tune with him you have taken a holy vow it is not that you do not for even single moment he will want this to happen to you the existence has loved you sun gives you light moon gives you its cool light you are created by god entire existence is in your support but you are running away from him your door, doors and windows are all closed open the windows and the doors sunlight will fill your room because of your fear security all your doors and windows are closed according to nanak the most important thing is that you appeal to god and if it is not so and even taking a bath in the holy waters is meaningless 
To Nanak, all these things are irrelevant. The most important thing is your being in harmony with his will. If your life and understanding is not in harmony with the divine will, then every act will certainly strengthen your ego. Look at a pilgrim. When he returns from the pilgrimage, he is much more egoistic. He expects, expects a warm welcome that he has now returned from the pilgrimage. Even your fasting is to strengthen your ego. Try to understand that all that happens in this life or you achieve is through effort. Love cannot happen by effort. Love springs forth from an unknown realm. And when the energy overwhelms you, and when the energy overwhelms you, change begins to happen. All that is sublime and divine in nature, it is very simple. When you are sailing your boat against the breeze, it will be difficult. And when you start sailing with the wind, it is effortless. To attain to your inwardness, no effort is needed. For this, you need a loving heart. And then things will begin to happen on its own. Things will begin to happen on its own. It happened, there was the third master in the lineage, according to Nana. After Nanak was Guru Angad Dev and thereafter was Guru Amar Das. Before he became the disciple of Guru Angad Dev, he was a normal Hindu ritualistic, taking a bath in the Holy River and things like these. One day some of his old time friends came. He said, what are you doing? Let's have a little a get together. So he said that there we will have cook and we will spend time, quality time together. Guru Amar Das said that I am now involved in this meditation and this session is going on. You take this pumpkin as you are going to the holy river for the bath. Let get this pumpkin also bath in the holy river and when you come back we will cook it. They found it strange, but they still followed. They took the pumpkin and gave him a holy bath. They brought it, pumpkin was cooked. It was bitter. So they said, what kind of joke is this? This pumpkin is bitter. Amardas said, I knew. That's why I sent it to Holy Ganges to take a bath. And you say by taking a bath in the holy river, your sins are washed. Since means all that is bitterness in you, all that is fear. This is symbolic by the one word, bitterness. So that's why I send the pumpkin. So just as you, your sins are washed, I wanted the bitterness of pumpkin to be washed away. So that when it comes and we cook it, there will not be any problem. When the holy water cannot remove the bitterness, convert bitterness into sweetness. How can you? Yes. If there is awareness, then anything even for taking a bath in the holy river or in your shower can remove the bitterness or the negativity from your heart. And that awareness, that understanding is the most important aspect of the inward journey.